I would like to start having some robust discussions with the people that I know and love. And I feel like there's this kind of uh, impenetrable wall of my past, my eccentricity, and all the things that I've been involved with. And so people are not so, you know, I understand you are wary about jumping in. I mean, I tend to be a conspiracy theorist. And I tend to uh, bring up topics that aren't necessarily what people want to focus on because they're scared, in my opinion. So that said, I would I would still like to be Okay, like I'm about to enter the world, I feel, and I want to do so in a way that brings together all the different elements that I've been playing with. And I would like to be sort of like an orchestrator or a conductor or a sort of the, the master facilitator. <clears throat> and I know this can be very irritating to all those other people that want to facilitate or control the conversation. I mean, that's the essence of human dynamics, who controls the conversation. And I, I had this huge insight from uh, someone, I, I, won't, I won't say who they are, but we were having a discussion and they said that meetings, the only purpose of a meeting was for someone to impose power. I couldn't <clears throat> quite comprehend that and the more I thought about it because I haven't been involved in hierarchical power structures much. I've been sort of <laughs> on the fringe and I've been studying communication. I've been studying information systems. I've been studying how information flows. And so to me, if we are going to build a new paradigm, if we are going to come together to do what we know we can do, we have to learn how to communicate. And what I feel I have is I, I know a lot of different people who I feel are very intelligent, who have a very good perspective. And if we added all our intelligence together on certain topics, we would get a robust discussion different than what I'm seeing out there. Like we tend to sort of go to the experts. We tend to go outside of ourselves. We, we tend to sort of always someone else out there is better than our little community here. And I had this idea of a shared knowledge community for a long while. And now I want to put it into being, I think I'm, I'm getting it. I think I finally got it about how to do this. And at some point, you kind of got to throw your hat in the ring or you have to decide, okay, I'm in. And then the people that are in create a boundary. And that boundary is, you know, we are in the shared knowledge community and there's a boundary and there's people outside of it. And when any time humans create a boundary, just like this Taurus field here, it's the distinction between what something is and what something isn't. It's the line in the sand. It's the, the reason why you're there. And so something like a shared knowledge community, the reason why you're there is for everyone to share your gifts, to share your knowledge so that all of us can benefit. You know, I'm pretty good at doing this, but I'm horrible at doing that. And that's the essence of being human. And how do we bring together the pieces and the parts now to form a whole so that we humans can work together? Because before it was kind of obvious. I mean, if, if you were a farmer and I was a tradesperson and that person was a warrior, we all knew our kind of roles with one another and, and life kind of went on. But now what's happened, there's been an instant you know, huge transformational shifts occurring on the planet in so many different ways. We can't even comprehend it all. And we need to adapt. That's essential, right? We need to adapt. So in order 
to adapt. It's like creating new organiza organizational structures that help us to come together. And so we do that first conceptually. We, we do that first on maps. We do that first in going, okay, well, here's, here's I'm proposing something. Let's see how this can work. And right now, all across the world, there's all these human beings who are, who are you know, brilliant and have, have worked their entire lives to come up with solutions. And they may be isolated or, or unknown or not put together. So the shared knowledge community is bringing people together who wouldn't ordinarily come together to basically build a whole new world, but to just confine it to 144 people. It's like sort of a magic number. 144 has an element that if you look into it mathematically is just beautiful like if you divide it by two you get 72 and 72 is eight times nine eight times nine means there's nine eights and then you can have a sort of a square nine eights is like wait a second it's back to one again it's like when you come back to one again when you come back to wholeness again what are the pieces and what are the parts and how do they all configure together and if human beings are the pieces and the parts, how do we come together? And so I've been mapping madly. <laughs> if anyone knows me, they, they probably see me in a coffee shop and I'm sitting there and I'm mapping and I'm mapping and I come up with these maps and maps and maps and maps and maps and maps. And I had a, a bit of a map insanity for at least 20, 25 years of thinking that I can come up with the solution or a solution. And I mean, it's, it's a little bit strange. I have to admit, it's a little bit odd. But what it did is it, it gave me a, a laser like focus with abstract thinking and conceptual models and, and wondering how does us all fit together? Because we have this mind, we have this ability to think, and then we have software, and we have the internet, and we have these connection points occurring, and we have billions, billions of humans who are kind of like thinking together and figuring things out, and, and we're, we're in a renaissance, we're in this incredible surge of creativity because of all of the different worldviews coming together at the same time on the internet in videos such as this and there's this uh, uh, uh. but meanwhile back at the farm outside it's like nature is just mm, humans so there's this massive technological advances and behind the scenes we have no idea you know how far we're going and what we're coming up with because each of us has you know this incredible potential to do anything and yet you know, what are we doing? You know, what really are we doing? And so the idea of a shared knowledge community is, again, 144 people who have agreed to, you know, one, you know, <laughs> don't shaft each other like it's like a it's a business environment where it's it's like kind of open source transparent money and information flow now this by itself is a huge new you know world i mean whether it's on the blockchain or whether it's just by our own authenticity you know the world is is going to be able to see us and we're looking at one another going, okay, well, we've had a few thousand years of that. And that didn't kind of go so well, or it did, it got us to here. But I don't think most humans really want to chop each other up and blow each other up and, and do all that kind of war stuff anymore. I mean, personally, I just think it's a little bit passe. So how are we going to proceed? How are we going to go into the, the, the new world? And if you put together virtual reality and nanobots and all the other technologies that are coming together, it, it's, 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 you know, there's infinite potential. We could possibly do anything, but, and what are we going to do? <clears throat> and so the idea 
of a shared knowledge community is that everyone is agreeing to a sort of a set of rules around infrastructure and there's a laid out maps as to how things are organized but it's basically having the human being and our gifts as the center point not products it doesn't mean we're not creating products but we're putting the human being ahead of the products in terms of commodification it's like the center point is the us and how we share our gifts and how we come together to live it's not here's the product now we can go make tons of money kind of thing we have to really think about our economics we have to think about how do we create what do we create why do we create and how in balance is it with nature how in balance is it with kind of universal laws that run this world that you know for a, a good part of time a large part of our population was in alignment with but certain parts of our population have been destroying other parts of populations. And there's just been this kind of, you know, I mean, human history isn't something we all want to go, yay, all right, went really well. It was like, okay, so we get that. You know, we can understand that, <laughs> you know, we're in an evolution of a species and we're coming to a point now where we have to transform and change or else, you know, we're going to, I think, kill ourselves. So the idea is that we build a new organizational structure, which I have been calling a shared knowledge community. And <clears throat> it's an experiment. And I have a whole bunch of tools called the new paradigm toolkit tools in learning, creativity, communication, and healing. Those four things. You know, if you can learn, if you can create, if you can communicate, if you can heal, you're probably going to do pretty good as a human. But if you can't, you're probably going to have a, a lot of problems. So we got to simplify. We have to simplify to the basics in terms of, you know, what do we agree upon? Where are we going? What do we want? And start to, again, like move from this empty space into a design place, a free space, a dream space, a place where anything is possible and we can answer the problems that we're facing in society today. And so one day, soon, there are going to be 144 people in the first shared knowledge community. And we are going to build a whole new world. This is one step, this video, to entice you to join the journey and see if you want to be an observer who's watching this or an active participant who has jumped in and said, I want to play.